The crew at Classic Industries might be B-listers in an A-level feature build, but under the direction of Mark and Edgar, these guys are go-getters. I was going to wear my old Keep On Truckin' t-shirt for a retro feel, but that's kind of like playing Hendrix for hip-hoppers. The only method here is keeping it real. Can a vehicle be worth more than the sum of its parts? One look at this logo should give you the answer. Morning. Uh, hey, Dan. Morning, Dan. Morning, Dan. Is it here? Has it yep. arrived? Cab's here. This is the first available cab produced for the 52 to 53 year pickup. Um, it's actually a very nice cab. The cab is produced under license by General Motors and joins an impressive list of body shells available from the aftermarket. GM's leading the way with six products. 67 and 69 Camaro coupes and convertibles are available, along with 47 to 50 Chevy trucks. The 52-53 cab is number six. Ford's gotten on board, too, with two very strong offerings, the 67 and 68 Mustang Fastback. All right, Dan, we're good. The idea behind all these shells isn't really to make a complete car available. Officially, they're collision replacement parts. You know I had to have the first ride. Thing is, there's enough parts available to pretty much build the entire vehicle. Once we got the cab onto the chassis, we went ahead and we referenced to our parts manual or the factory assembly manual, and we've got the correct clearances for the bottom of the floor to the top of the rails and went ahead and set them to specs with the proper shims. Those are in. Our cab is completely secured. Mm -hmm. Bring some tin over. We got our new radiator support from Bitchin Products, and since the chassis did not have the bolt holes for the cross member and the rivets, we went ahead and kind of mocked everything up. We took measurements off of the donor truck, and we put them in the uh, approximate location. The fenders actually went on pretty easily. We did have to modify them slightly. We had to cut back a notch and fold it over and bang it out with a hammer and dolly to get a nice flush line going down the edge of the fender. Where things get tricky is when you start to put products from different suppliers together and hope they'll all fit without problems. Isn't optimism a wonderful thing? Now once we did that, we went ahead and installed the new fender aprons from Bitchin Products and bolted all those up. Not every piece of metal is available yet. Our truck will probably end up being 95% new. Some salvage will be required. Some new steel, some old steel. All we need is a drivetrain, and we could push some tin. 